how that um, shuffling of parental information happens in meiosis one. So meiosis one starts with prophase one, which again, nuclear envelope dissolves. Also the spindle fibers are starting to form at this point, uh, just like in mitosis. Um, but I'm not bothering to draw that because I'm just going to focus on what's happening with the chromosomes right now. So the chromosomes condense in prophase one. And also in prophase one, this is unique to prophase one of meiosis one, um, the homologous pairs pair up with each other. And when they pair up, segments of them overlap, and that's called crossing over. So let me write that here. Crossing, oops. Crossing over segments of homologous pairs overlap. All right, so let me find a good place to put that. This program is just not very easy to use. Okay, so it's just going to have to overlap in a fixed one. All right, so segments of homologous pairs overlap. Um, and when crossing over happens, something else can happen called genetic recombination. Genetic recombination is when a piece of one chromosome in a pair pops off and switches places with the homologous segment in the homologous chromosome of that pair. So like what I drew in the first lecture um, was this little segment here popped off from this chromosome and switched places with this segment that was overlapping it here of this chromosome. So when, when a genetic recombination is drawn um, in most diagrams that you'll find online, it's usually drawn with just the tips of the chromosomes, and that's merely because it's easier to draw that way. In reality, genetic recombination can happen to any size segment of a chromosome, and as many segments, there's no bar on how many segments can be exchanged between two pairs. So it can happen like at 50 different places along the chromosomes that switch places. So really, it's, it's essentially infinite diversity can come out of genetic recombination because any size and any number of segments can switch places between chromosomes within a homologous pair. All right, so genetic recombination. I'll put that here. Um, I'll say here. Uh, let's put that up a little higher. Internal and terminal. Chromosomes, I'm overlapping anaphase here, uh, in homologous pair so, trade segments. Trade. Sorry, you know these free programs. I think it's still better than just using the PowerPoint. Okay, so genetic recombination is when maternal and paternal chromosomes within a homologous pair trade segments with each other. So you'll see what that looks like. I'll draw, draw what that looks like in metaphase one. Now, so prophase one is always about nucleus dissolving, chromosomes condensing, spindle fibers forming. Um, these, the spindle fibers should already be attached really at this point because that's how they paired up, the spindle fibers move them. So chromosomes are always getting moved around by spindle fibers. But I'm not going to draw spindle fibers in this. You can see that in your manual, in your uh, textbook. Um, I'm just focusing on what the chromosomes are doing here. So another way that, so, so that's one type of shuffling, crossing over in genetic recombination. Another type of shuffling is called independent assortment. Now I'll explain that in a second. So let me just draw this chromosome. So metaphase is always about chromosomes lining up on the equator. How did I, I don't remember exactly what I drew in the last, did I draw those two going to the same? I can't remember. This may not, I might not be dividing these exactly the same way as I did in the PowerPoint on, in the previous lecture, so I'm sorry. That's true. I just can't quite remember. I did now that I'm doing this again. So here I'm drawing that crossing over event. So the that's the paternal set. And here's the maternal set of chromosomes. Lining up. I'm, I only drew one crossing over event. And like I said, really a lot of them happen. Wavy chromosomes, 
So you can see here I've drawn that crossing over event where these segments switch places between the maternal and paternal set. I'm only drawing one crossing over event because it's really hard to keep track of and draw. All right. By the way, to remember prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, I always use proper men are tidy. Um, it gets a little messed up when you have a pro-metaphase, like your book tells you exists in mitosis, but um, you don't have to worry about pro-metaphase and meiosis. All right, so in metaphase, the pairs line up on the equator, so that's a little bit different than mitosis and meiosis too. Um, and, of course, they're directed there by the spindle fibers, which I'm not drawing. So what happens in metaphase 1 is something called independent assortment. And independent assortment is when it, it, it means that where one maternal chromosome goes does not indicate where any of the other in, uh, maternal chromosomes are going. And where one paternal chromosome goes when it's lining up has no effect on where, has no bearing on where the other paternal chromosomes go. So what that basically means is that it's not like all maternal chromosomes stay on one side while all paternal chromosomes go to the other side. If that was true, then when these cells divided, there wouldn't be a lot of diversity because you get all, one daughter cell would always have all the paternal chromosomes and one daughter cell would always have all the maternal chromosomes. That's not very much diversity that's not mixing and matching. Instead, some of the paternal chromosomes might go to the left, while some of the paternal chromosomes go to the right. Some of the maternal chromosomes go to the right, while some go to the left. So where this maternal chromosome, this chromosome, maternal chromosome lines up independently of all the other maternal chromosomes. This paternal chromosome lines up independently of any other paternal chromosome. Okay, so that's called independent assortment. Um, so that happens in metaphase one. Oh, I should start over here. Independent. Assortment. Uh, so each maternal and paternal chromosomes so lines up independently of every other maternal and paternal chromosome. So in one of the homework questions I asked, and it talks in your book about how much genetic diversity can come from um, independent assortment alone. So if you ignore genetic recombination, pretend that doesn't even happen. In a species like us, with 23 pairs of chromosomes, how many different ways could you redistribute those 23 pairs into daughter cells um, to get, you know, unique, how many unique sex cells could you get from genetic recombination alone? So we're looking at the yellow fever mosquito here, so we just have three pairs of chromosomes. So the answer for the yellow fever mosquito would be two to the third, because there's pairs, so each pair has two chromosomes, um, and then I don't think I can do an exponent in this program, so this, this little caret indicates that this three is an exponent, so it's two to the third. So there's three pairs, two for the pair, three for how many pairs there are. So, you know, for this pair, this one could either go to this daughter and this one to this daughter, or the other way. This one could go to this daughter, or this one could go to this daughter. So each of these pairs, for each of these pairs, there's two different ways they could redistribute. This uh, paternal one could go to the left and maternal one could go to the right, or maternal could go to the left and paternal could go to the right. right? And that's true for this pair too. So if you go to the left, go to the right, or go to the right, go to the left, and so on. So there's two ways each of these pairs could redistribute. So you have to put that together, you have to figure out how that all, you know, so, but if that's if you're looking at them one at a time. If you're looking at three pairs together, you know, so if this one goes left, this one goes to the right, well, you know, it just gets too complicated. I'm not going to draw it all out, but uh, you have to multiply the probability. So you have two ways that these could be redistributed times two ways that these could be redistributed times two ways that these could be redistributed. So two times two times two is two to the third. Um, if you, so for us, an organism like us with 23 pairs, the answer would be 2 to the 23rd. So we have a lot of different chromosomes. If, even without genetic recombination, there's 
um, a huge amount of genetic diversity that comes just from independent assortment alone. So 2 to the 23rd actually is more than 8 million. There's 8 million different ways that these chromosomes could could separate and distribute into the daughter cells to make, you know, more than 8 million or 2 to the 23rd unique sex cells. So that means that even if none of my cells ever underwent genetic recombination in prophase 1, I would have 8 million, I would be capable of producing 8 million different kinds of eggs, genetically unique eggs. So that means that I probably would never make two eggs that were identical. Probably not ever. It would be very unlikely to. And then if you combine that with a partner, so if my husband can have, if my husband and I, just ignoring genetic recombination, if we only had diversity in our sex cells because of uh, independent assortment in metaphase one, he would ha be able to produce eight million, over eight million types of genetically unique sperm. I can make more than eight million genetically unique eggs. So how about the chances of each of those types of you know, each sperm meeting each egg, how many unique babies could we make? And the answer is was something like 64 trillion. I can't remember exactly the number, but it's in your textbook. Book. That's where the trillion number came from. 64 trillion, it's 8 million times 8 million. So even without genetic recombination, it would be almost impossible, almost impossible, essentially impossible for two people to have the exact same baby twice. Right? The only exception is identical twins, because identical twins were actually formed from one fertilized egg that then divided in, into two separate babies. So they actually have to, but it's not from, you know, two sperm that were genetically identical fertilizing two different eggs that were genetically identical. That would never, that, that is essentially impossible to happen. So a huge amount of, for an organism with a lot of chromosomes, um, so, so for the yellow fever mosquito, the amount of genetic diversity that comes from independent assortment would just be 2 times 2 times 2, so 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. So only 8 unique sex cells could come out of uh, independent assortment alone for a sim you know, an organism with six, only 6 chromosomes. But for us, with a lot of chromosomes, more than 8 million um, the different types of sex cells that could come from independent assortment alone. All right, so... Anaphase 1 is always about separating, and so since we're here, I'll just draw this out. Um, may as well continue on with this. Um, so we have, oh, I think I'm doing black for this. So, oh, I see what's happening. So, so basically the cell is going to divide down this line. So these chromosomes, these homologous pairs in meiosis 1 separate. We talked about an overview. Meiosis 1 is all about homologous pairs separating from each other. So those pairs are going to separate from each other. They're pulled apart by the spindle fibers, of course. Um, and, oops. Alright, so they're pulled to opposite sides of the cell, and remember the cell's going to divide down this line here, and then in tel telophase nuclei are formed around those two new sets of genetic information. So you'll have haploid nuclei. Remember if this were mitosis, you wouldn't be separating homologous pairs, you would just be separating the sister chromatids. So each daughter cell in mitosis would be genetically identical and have six, still have six chromosomes just like the parent. But uh, that's not true in meiosis. In meiosis, you're separating the six and half. So. Oops, let me just add this in here. Right. Okay. So we already basically drew this in the last one, but I'm just going to finish it up here. So started out with six chromosomes, ending up with three. The cell in cytokinesis will divide around these two nuclei. Um, three chromosomes in each 
six chromosomes here, three in each, but one of each kind. Big, small, wavy. Big, small, wavy. Okay. But we see that, that you can see what the result of genetic recombination, popping off of uh, and switching places of segments of homologous chromosomes, um, and then independent assortment, a shuffling of maternal and paternal sets to different sides of the cell, to different daughter cells. All right, I'm only doing this kind of detail for meiosis one because that's where these diversity promoting steps happen, um, but we'll do a quick PowerPoint to go over the other uh, stages of meiosis two in the next PowerPoint.